connect it with the loss of empire, wounded pride, and most importantly, un uncertainty about Russia's place in the world of the 21st century. And were you in their spot, you would be the same in my view, and I would. Where do they go? I had one interesting comment, our conversation was that Ghanoff was repeated with Lebed. They talked about they don't want this NATO expansion, they know it's not in their security interest, and on and on, and said, well, and if you do that, we may have to look to China. And I couldn't help using the colloquial expression from my state by saying to Zaganov, lots of luck in your senior year. Um, you know, uh, good luck. And if, not, if that doesn't work, try Iran. Uh, we understand that President Putin is going to meet with the president of one of the newer members of the alliance, Iran, later today, and NATO member Turkey looking to join yeah. this group. What are you expecting? Yeah, well, he's going to meet with President Pazashkian. We were, Christine, expecting there to be an announcement. When I say we were, Iran suggested that they would uh, sign a, a new agreement uh, with uh, Russia, we, uh, and that hasn't happened. We assume it's going to happen at some point, but it's a similar agreement that Russia signed with North Korea just earlier uh, this year. So there will be again, I mean, to ignore what's happening here in Kazan uh, and with these countries would be foolish. It, it, it's a sign again of a growing alliance between Russia and North Korea and Iran and countries uh, like China. Uh, and that is something uh, that that is a threat. And I would fully expect Putin to be supporting Iran in any conflict with Israel. Uh, so, you know, that's likely to be the case uh, with Russia and Iran. The heads of the U.S. intelligence agencies appeared on Capitol Hill and told lawmakers China, Russia and Iran are increasingly working together against American interests. China is working to develop its own form of multilateralism while deepening its relationship with Russia and Iran in particular. Avril Haines, the director of national intelligence, testified that China and Russia are making preparations for cyber attacks on the U.S. in case there is a war with America. Both China and Russia effectively trying to pre-position themselves in ways that would allow them to conduct those kinds of attacks. Well, that's an interesting question. So at this juncture, uh, China, of course, is the biggest and most powerful of the countries. Uh, it's also, um, it's driving a lot of what's happening. Um, the relationship now between China and Russia is, is a subservient relationship. Um, Russia is uh, far more desperate than uh, Mr. Putin is wanting to let on. They've lost, uh, we don't know exactly how many Russian soldiers have been killed, but uh, well over 100,000, something, something hundreds of thousands. And so the Russians are very desperate. At this juncture as well, as you're following closely in the Middle East, um, despite uh, pressure from, from the international community, uh, Israel continues its battle against terrorism that is being sponsored by Iran. Um, and so Iran is also in a desperate situation. Um, so at this juncture, um, it's very important for your viewers to understand that with Mr. Uh, Zelensky's help and with Israel's steadfastness, the Krinks are actually up against the wall and it's going to be interesting to see China manages the next steps. That's very interesting. شما یک ارتباط راه بردی است و این غیر قابل اجتناب قطعا برای ما خیلی مفیده همان گونه که برای کشور عزیز روسیه و همسایه عزیز ما مفیده ما میتونیم یک تعامل سازنده هم در چارچوب بریکس که با پشتیبانی شما ما عضو دائم شدیم و در اوراسیا و شانگهای که و این تحریمی رو که آمریکا بر ما تحمیل کرده و بر شما بیشتر داره این روند رو ادامه میده و تمامیت خواهی که داره در دنیا ایجاد میکنه به هم بزنیم و قادر باشیم با هم دیگه ارتباطات اقتصادی، سیاسی، فرهنگی، علمی و کارشناسی داشته باشیم و امیدوارم که به سرعت بتونیم این تفاهم نامه ها رو با هم امضا کنیم. Главное, был подтвержден взаимный курс на всемирное укрепление наших связей. Они находятся на подъеме, носят подлинно дружественный, конструктивный характер. Скоро мы сможем закрепить достигнутые результаты новым большим межгосударственным договором о всеобъемлющем стратегическом партнерстве между Россией и Ираном. Продолжим сегодня обсуждение наиболее актуальных международных тем включая драматическое развитие событий на Ближнем Востоке, положение дел в Сирии и Закавказье. В 
целом подчеркну, что подходы России и Ирана к глобальной повестке дня близки или полностью совпадают. Ваша нынешняя поездка в Россию первая в должности президента Исламской Республики Иран. И это имеет большое символическое значение. Иран стал полноправным членом БРИКС, и вы знаете, что мы активно... Uh, but we've touched upon this earlier. Uh, what would you say is the ultimate goal of this alliance, or is it ultimate goals, different ultimate goals? Yeah, so, I, no, it, it's a singular, it, each, each has their own regional goal, of course, in East Asia, in the Middle East, and in Central Europe. Um, but their goal fundamentally is the same, which is to bring down what has been uh, an incredible period of peace and prosperity since the end of the Second World War, a system that, that is built on democracy and good governance, and a system that, that relies on international institutions. Um, now, this is a system that was built by the Allies after, after the end of World War II, and it's a system that, that Russia and China uh, and all countries have been invited to join, but instead of, of wanting to join, which would include uh, joining fully, which would include uh, having democratic processes at home, they, they prefer an authoritarian type of government and style where it really is um, sort of the, 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 the strongest uh, survive. Mm. Um, and so that's what, that's what they're looking at, at, and they're looking at destroying essentially the system, the international system of cooperation uh, mm. that, that has been built over the past 80 years. The rules-based system, yes. A new and robust partnership is emerging, posing a formidable challenge to the West as the conflict in Ukraine rages on. Russia has forged an ever closer bond with the trio of nations, China, Iran, North Korea. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has announced that the country is now implementing a nuclear force construction policy to increase the number of nuclear weapons exponentially. He said that North Korea must thoroughly prepare its nuclear capabilities and its readiness to use it properly at any given time in ensuring the security rights of the state. And added that a strong military presence is needed to face the various threats posed by the United States and its followers. The Indian Ocean Naval Symposium Maritime Exercise, or MX 2024, comes to an end in the north of the Indian Ocean with a flotilla of vessels. Hosted by Iran with the motto, Together for a Safe and Secure Indian Ocean, the drills were conducted with fleets from Russia, Oman and Iran. In today's world, which is accompanied by many changes and complexities, the developments in the Middle East have necessitated increased regional cooperation. In such a time, holding this maritime exercise plays an essential role in the shifting political and security landscapes. Holding IMEX 2024 not only strengthens maritime cooperation, but also increases Iran's credibility and influence at the international level as an effective response to anti-Iranian scenarios. This exercise showed the determination of the regional countries to create a common security foundation that can help strengthen regional peace and stability. Just from the statements that they've been making today, uh, you saw the different agendas. So, for example, uh, the Chinese uh, president, President Xi, uh, talking about wanting peace in, in, in the world, including in Ukraine, and not wanting to, quote, pour fuel on the fire. Now, that's an implicit criticism of the, the U.S.'s support uh, for Ukraine. Uh, but it's also, isn't it, sort of standing a little bit uh, away from uh, Russia's position uh, on uh, Ukraine. So we shouldn't dismiss uh, the, 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 the different between these different countries at the same time what you're seeing there are adversaries of the US and partners and allies of the US standing together and their message is that they want some kind of independence from US dominance in the world again uh, for the next American president this is the kind of world that they're gonna be facing